Saturday night just a case of getting back to win the Obviously. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> How <are> you feeling? <laughs> I feel I feel all right, yeah. A few ups and downs, but grand. How's the camp? We spoke to All the classics are coming out. How are you feeling? How's the camp? Um, camp was good. Ups and downs again. It's not always perfect, but I'm here now, ready. That's it. I spoke to you a few weeks ago. Uh, you mentioned you've obviously had some huge fights in the last couple of months. You even said this is a bit of a step down in terms of pounds. What are your thoughts on the opponents? Um, yeah, of course it's a step down. My last three fights have been against three world champions. So it had to have been a step down no matter who it was going to be. Um, but he's a good opponent. I'm ready for him. I think it's going to be a good fight. So, you know, it was always going to be a step down no matter who it was. You've been a main event here plenty of times. But Saturday night, Yaroslav, he's been around SPG a couple of times the last week or so. Have you spoke to him? I have, yeah. Um, nice fella. I didn't train with him, but uh, Gunny trained him a lot. Said he's absolutely amazing, which we knew already. I'm looking forward to that one. That's a good fight, great main event. So, yeah. It's emotional as well for him, isn't it, after everything he's been through? Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? When you're in the situation he's in, that his country's going through, you know, this is like a holiday, I'm sure, to come over here and, and, and whatever, kind of get away from that for a second. So, he's a tough guy. Um, you know, I'm sure he's going to perform well. Then just a word on Pedro, he's obviously got a huge fight as well. Um, Tight eliminate for him? Yeah, um, deserves it as well. I think. I think it's a tough matchup, but a, a winnable one. Um, I think Jeremy is kind of a tough grinder, but tough grinders normally grind for a round on Pedro and then he blasts them for the second and third, so I think that's what he can do in this one. Peter, you spoke about obviously fighting three world champions in the last three fights and now coming into this one. How does that like affect you mentally? Like You've had those big fights, you've had a long career, you know, you're getting up in, into your, your later 30s now, or mid-30s anyway, I suppose. Was there any thought, you know, thought of not doing it, not coming back, not having this fight, or like was it was it always we always going to get up and work your way back? Yeah, no, no thought whatsoever of not doing it. You know, I um, like I said, three world champions beat one of them, lost to one, and then went 25 minutes with Ben Henderson. So, you know, I feel good. I wasn't even, you know, I don't like making excuses, and I didn't after that fight. But you could look at that fight and know I wasn't right. I was just after having two shoulder surgeries and a bicep surgery. Um, probably was a bit too soon for me, but whatever. I gave it a go. wasn't good enough. Here I am now. When you look at that Benson Henderson fight, and obviously he's one of the, the best lightweights we've ever seen in MMA, and I, you know, the five-round kind of advantage he had in most areas for it, is that something you look at and say, right, that's a level I need to rise at, or is it something that kind of brings you down a bit looking back at it? Yeah, I look at it and say I need to rise to that level, but also I, I think I made a strategic... I wasn't myself in that fight, number one. just want to be clear on that, but I also kind of made a strategic error in that fight. If I fought him again, I would grapple with him. You know, in the first exchange in the grappling, I stitched him on two, two counters, and I felt like I could grapple with him. But I had, I had so in my mind to not grapple with him that I, I ended up being very defensive and just fought like crap then basically but if I fought him again I would engage with him in the grappling I feel like I can, I can grapple with him and then when you do grapple with these guys like that that kind of knocks the taste out of their mouth of grappling and then it turns into a striking fight then um, so I think I made a massive kind of strategic error in that um, that's probably what I do what I do different Is that that's something kind of cr throughout your career you know we spoke before he started as a striker did a lot of kind of grinding and wrestling then and then came back to maybe mm -hmm. fighting more as a striker as well in this part of your career is it something maybe you want to change things up in terms of in the middle of the fight grappling and striking kind of all in the one fight yeah I kind of um, I enjoy fighting like striking and being in a fight so that's kind of why I fight that way more than anything I also think in the back of my mind that's what people understand and they like and it's served me well <laughs> let's be honest it's, it's, it's been going well for me I think people enjoy my fights for the most part so I've kind of had that in my head too but you know yeah I did think about I have been thinking about this one for this fight where I'm not going to be anti-grappling all the time if he wants to grapple I'll grapple with him and I'm going to remind everyone what a good grappler I am mm -hmm. um, so yeah to answer your question I, I probably will do that if it, if it, if it, if it Gets put, gets, gets put to me. <clears throat> what do you think of Bryce as a fighter? Obviously, he is, it's a big, tough mental fight for him as well because he's coming off of three losses. If he loses this one, you know, he mightn't have a job in the promotion anymore. Do you envision that being a dog fight between both of you, you trying to get back up to that level and him trying to keep the job, basically? 
Yeah, well, any of these fights are dog fights, Sean. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're always fighting for something. There's always grave consequences to losing. Um, there's never, there's no more pressure on me or I'm sure Bryce now than there is in any fight. Because mm -hmm. tough guys like this that have got to this level put that kind of pressure on themselves for every single fight. There's, mm -hmm. there, I, I describe it as like a glass that's full. It can't get any more full of pressure or water or whatever it is. It's just, it's just there. Mm -hmm. So any fight I have, I feel under immense pressure. Um, to perform and to win, and this is just no different. Mm -hmm. But I understand what you're saying, yeah, there, perhaps you could look at it that there's more pressure, but in my mind there isn't. It's just another massively important fight, and that's it. And the last one for me, even if that was the case, I suppose the song will come on, the walkout will go, the crowd will be up, and it'll be all systems go for that. Is, is that like a, another moment you're looking forward to? Like Sometimes these moments can be fleeting, but you've had many of them, and to have another big one here, it, it must be great to look forward to. Ah, yeah, I, I always say this, I, I feel very lucky that I, I get to do this with the reception I get and that, that people like me and whatever, I just feel very, very lucky and it's a privilege and every fight I have, I treat it like a privilege. I'm just so happy and lucky that I can do this again and hopefully I'll do it again and again and again and, you know, I'm just very lucky. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, Sean. Something I've always been in awe of with you is your mentality. This is the first time in a long time you're going into a, a fight as a favourite. What do you have to do mentally to prepare? What are you doing differently? Like I know if you're fighting Pitbull or Benson, so you're springing out of the bed to go to training, but fighting Bryce with the greatest of respect, how do you prep yourself to get to that level that you would be going into a fight with Pitbull or, or Benson? It's kind of the same answer I gave Sean. It's just every fight, I, the lads will tell you, I just, I train the same for every fight. It's, it's just every fight is the most important. It's just, like there can't be any more pressure on me or more fear in me or more whatever word you want to use for any opponent. They're all good. There's all always going to be 10,000 people watching. It's always, you know, grave kind of consequences if I lose, massive reward if I win. Um, so it's, you know, training is not different for any of the opponents, to be honest about it, um, whether it's Benson or, like you said, with respect to Bryce, that it's a slightly lower level of opponent. It's the same thing. I just trained as hard as I could, did as best I could. Made, made my training camp as disgusting and horrible as I could. And that's the same for every fight. What would be your, your bucket list fight? So you win Saturday, like who is it that you haven't fought that you'd love to have a go at next? Um, that's a good question. I'd like to fight Patricky again. I know I fought him twice, that's not what you asked, but <laughs> that's probably the one that springs to mind. I feel like that one is, I feel like, um, he beat me fair and square in the second one, but I feel like it was a kind of a mistake that he capitalised on really expertly. So I, I think I'd like to fight him again um, and kind of settle that one. It's one all, and I think I could beat him if we fought again. I know I was trying to get you to, to praise yourself as something of a, a fool's errand here, but with Connor like primarily fighting abroad and James having just horrendous luck with injuries, mm. you've essentially been the headliner of Irish MMA and carried it for the past few years. Do you think you're, you're underappreciating your legacy in the sport, or is that even something that comes into your thoughts? Um, no, I don't think about it, but I don't think I'm underappreciated. I think I'm, you know, you'll see the crowd now and thing. I think I get a pr plenty of appreciation. Um, sometimes, like, after a loss, you feel underappreciated because people can be mean. And if you make the mistake of typing your name into Twitter, you realise this very quickly. And I did this after the last fight, and, and people are pretty horrible. Um, but that's just, I think it's a small percentage of fans have this attitude and... I try and remember that and I try and just recall the cheering and the, the nice things people when people stop me in shops and tell me I did well and you know don't mind that last fight you did well and this happens that was mainly what I got the week after the Benson fight was people stopping me in garages telling me how well I did you know so you, you focus in on the bad stuff sometimes but reality is people are kind of proud of you and, and want to see you do well you know and finally for me, obviously you've done a lot of coaching over the past couple of years. Do you think that's something that you would have that passion, the same that you have and the drive that you have for fighting? And that's something you do when your career finishes, hopefully in a, a while from now? Yeah, it is. And I, I enjoy coaching. Um, and I think I'll enjoy it more when I stop fighting because it's hard to fully commit to it when you're fighting because um, you've got your own things to be doing and you've got your own schedule to keep to. But when I, when I actually finish fighting, I think that's something I'll really enjoy because I really enjoy it as it is. And all I don't enjoy about it is that I, I, I can't, give as much as I possibly can to it, do you know what I mean? Um, so I think I'll enjoy it even more when I do actually stop and retire. Appreciate that, thanks a lot, We had uh, Carl Moore on the podcast there this week and he said that you would agree with him that you actually robbed uh, your walkout song from him and that he had a... <laughs> <laughs> Good look. <laughs> the, 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 the hierarchy of that is 
I had it, Ash robbed it from me, and he robbed it from Ash Daly. That's the way that went. So I was the first one with that. That's fair enough. You'll have to fight it out. Huh? You'll have to fight it out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of good songs, Carl. <laughs> All right. You know, you said it yourself, this is, this is a step down in competition. Coming in uh, from fighting multiple world champions, there's so much media attention on you. There's so much attention around the walkout. When you're coming into a fight where it's maybe, you know, trying to take a step back and just regroup, is any part of you just kind of like, Jesus, I wish I didn't have all this other outside the cage kind of attention and I could just go in and focus on rebuilding again? Uh, yeah, but I do feel it is that way for this one a bit because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not main event. I've been the main event the last good number of, or last two or three shows, whatever it is. So this time I feel like I've, I've, I've had way less media stuff all last week and this week. Um, so I do feel like I'm a little bit out of the spotlight, a small bit. And also, again, with the respect to Bryce, it's not Benson. So it's, it's a kind of a, there's less spotlight then on my opponent as well. So that puts less spotlight on you. So to answer your question, yeah, I, do, I do feel that way. I don't care about it. It doesn't make me feel better or worse, but I do feel that way that it's like slightly less kind of um, spotlight on me. It seems that uh, a smile comes on your face when you re re relive the old days of Irish MMA, talking about like with Virgin Media recently with about Cage Contender and John Ferguson and, and these kind of guys. Is it? Did you enjoy that period of your career more? It's obviously a very different period now, but is it, oh. is it the nostalgia or was it more fun back then? Oh, it was fun. I loved it. Artem, Artem's in the background there. I, I, I used to, back then, um, I used to drive up from Waterford. I didn't live in Dublin. I used to drive up from Waterford I'd, I'd sleep on a couch and I'd sleep on my brother's spare bed for a night and I'd sleep in my car for a night and you were just kind of living the dream. There was no pressure at all. It was just kind of like uh, I'd go in, I'd spar in the daytime and then Artem was working in the bank, I'd spar him in the evening time and he'd bring me for lunch because he had a job. <laughs> so he'd feed me for the night. It was just, I didn't have a pot to piss in, but it was like really good fun, really enjoyed it. In ways it was even better than things are, do you know what I mean? It was just great crack. It was like really good fun. I loved that I did, um, really good. Are there parts of the fight week, maybe out, outside of the media side, that you can kind of find that fun again? You can hear, you know, <laughs> outside, everyone kind of cackling, laughing and stuff like that. Or what, what are the, the moments in fight week that are most enjoyable to you, I suppose? Um, just like, to be honest, just um, knocking around the hotel with my friends. Do you know what I mean? It's just, my life is enjoyable. It's not, fight week is not much different to every other week. It's just you're with your friends. Your friends become your kind of work colleagues often in everyone's life, but especially in fighting, because you spend so much time with them and you're so like-minded, you end up becoming very good friends with these people. So I just have a few friends here with me, knocking around the hotel, just up in my room, hanging out, just chilling. So it's like, it's good, no problem. I could do it with a steak or something or a slice <laughs> of pizza, but other than that, we're okay. Just the one question for me. Obviously those walkouts must be really emotional moments for you. How do you remain calm going into the fight? Because the atmosphere is so amazing. Um, I don't know, but I do. I couldn't tell you. I don't, tr I don't um, have any process to whatever. I just walk out. I try, I, I actually I try, and what, I, what I've tried to do in the last few is kind of trying to enjoy it more. Try and just, this is really cool. Try and enjoy it. It's not going to last forever. And I try and enjoy it more. I don't know if that's better or worse than, than what I was doing in the first few of them, but I, I just, I, I can't really answer that to be honest. I just, I just walk out. I'm so focused on the fight. That's what I'm thinking about, really. So, um, don't know how to answer that one. It's it's a mad. What I'll tell you is, it's just it's a mad old experience. It's like especially with that the way the arena is built. I fought in bigger arenas than that in, in Russia, but that the way that one is built, it's 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 all. You can only feel the wave coming at you. So it's a it's a, it's a unique arena. Thanks, Peter. Thank all you. good. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.